Hi Harpers, I'm Tiffany from Tiffany Schaefer Harp and Song. Welcome to Tune Tutor. Today we're going to be going over some of my arrangement of Canon in D for small harp. I do have the sheet music linked below. There are two ways you can get that. You can either purchase it or you can get it as part of your monthly subscription on Patreon. So both those links are down below. Today I'm going to give you a little highlight tutorial of this arrangement, so we're not here all day, but we're going to look at some of the trickier spots, some fingering, and also just things you should watch out for in this arrangement. But if you would like some more in-depth tutorials, I'm going to have another one on Patreon where I go into some more detail, or for my beginner patrons, they'll also be getting a tutorial on how they can adapt some sections of this to their level. So if you want to find out how to get those, check the description box below. I have a question for you now. Let me know in the comments if you guys would like a sheet music version of this for floor harp. It would be almost the same, but there would be a lot more bass, and there would be one or two spots where the melody goes higher that I left out um, in case you have a small harp. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And let's get started. As I said, I do have this arrangement available in two different keys, in the key of D and in the key of C, but today we're going to learn it in the key of D as is traditionally played. So make sure all your Fs and your Cs are sharp and everything else is natural. If you want to hear the whole arrangement, you can click up there and I'll have it linked below too, so you can watch the video on that. Now I'll tell you the way I remember how this opening part goes. is I just remember uh, we start with the D, we're starting quite up higher in this octave above middle C, and your first one is going to be a D inversion in the right hand. So we're not going to continue straight on from the D here, instead we're going to do a D second inversion. So your first chord is D at the bottom, D second inversion, and then we're just going to continue all the chords uh, without any gaps for the most part. So you have an A, and then you continue with an A first inversion, B, B first inversion, F sharp, F sharp first inversion, G, G first inversion, and now we're going to go back to the D second inversion. From here on out, we're going to do second inversions. We're going to do G, not continue it from this B, but now go up here. So now we've got a D, a G, and a B. And then again, we're going to end it with an A, second inversion in the right. E, A, C sharp. So if you didn't catch that, everything is first inversion except for this first one and then the last three. So that's something that can help you remember how those chords go in the opening. Do keep an eye on the left hand. A lot of times you can interchange these different left hand patterns and it would be fine. Sometimes they would run into each other and that's why I, at, in some places, have a different left hand. But the way I have it, we're going to start with just a plain and simple D chord. And just it's just straight one, three, five, eight. And that's gonna stay the same pattern throughout this next section. So you're going to start with a D, and your right hand starts on F, and we're just going to climb down. Same pattern on the A, same pattern on the B, F sharp, same on the G, and then a lower D. Same on the G, same on the A. Uh, next, I have the pattern switch, so you're going to go to this pattern, which we have for most of the piece, and works well for small harp. So it's just going an a, tri a D triad, a 
and then coming back down to the middle of the chord. And then that same thing for all the same chords. This, of course, is while you're doing this pattern on top. And this comes on the first note of every chord. Now, do watch out in measure 25. I have you starting lower. And then we're just jumping back to the same. Same pattern there. When you get to places like measure 34, I think it sounds best if you roll most of the chords in this piece. So like that first um, C, E, A and that's in measure 34. And then of course we have this next section as you can see, you're going to have one note in the left to one note in the right, and they're just going to move in tandem that way. So just like that. I want to direct your attention to the trills that are marked, and this first one comes in measure 56, and that's this section. I'll play just before it. Now you could make that as long and drawn out as you want. I find it easiest just to do it a couple times. So I'll do that in slow motion. I'm just going back and forth from that D to that E. And then you start your next section. Which brings me to measure 57. So do watch out there. The left hand changes just for the D. Instead of going as we have normally been doing, this one changes to a straight up D, E, F, A, and that comes on this section. And then the right hand, the left hand goes just to what it was doing before. Same thing there. And let me direct your attention to measure 65 because it does the same thing in just that D chord section. And that's right here. And then we go back to normal. be doing on measure 73 just rolled chords in the left hand it's a little less to think about while we're doing this very tricky spot um, and it also gives you a chance to turn the page at the end there so I try to leave you a good page turn let's go over the fingering for this particular section on measure 73 so we want to start with fingers um, one, two, and three on A, G, F sharp. We're going to start with the thumb. So we're going to play one, three, two, one, three, two, one. Before you play that last one, 
bring your fourth finger down to the octave. So you can just practice that. Right? Now we can bring uh, a scale up. Four, three, two, one, three, two, one. So let's do that from the beginning. So remember to cross under three and not four here. We're going to put two on this F, and then you can bring three, two, one on the D, E, F. So after the scale, two, remember to skip a string here, three, two, one. Now again, before you play this one, Bring your fourth finger down to the octave. So that looks like this. All right, and now we can play. All right, so it is four, three, two, one, two, three, one, three, two, one. So I'll do that again. Four, three, two, one, two, three, one, three, two, one. Now two is ready to go to G. So we have that two and then one, two, three. Here's what you're going to do next. After that, th before you play that three, propel your one onto this F. Let's back it up a little bit from the first scale we did. but once you get it in your head it'll be better. After we've done that, one, two, three, two, one, three, two, one. Alright, so let's try that again. One, two, one, two, three, two, one, three, two, one. So we're gonna cross under threes there. Next, your two is going to be ready and available to take the G. Here's one way you can do this. Take the G. Now before we play the one, we're going to place four right below it on A. So that's a little tricky. Let me do that again. We're on measure 79 now. So here's our two on G. One, four, three, two, one. Let's write once more. One, four, three, two, one. And before you play that one, bring your fourth finger down to the A. We're just gonna do four, three, two, one scale. All the way up. That's the end of that first section. And let's quickly look at the next section. We've just come from this A scale. And you're going to put your second finger on F to start the next section. And then you can lift off. We're going to do 3, 2, 1 on D, F, D, E, F. So again, after that scale. And then 3, 2, 1. You're going to next do 2, 3, 1, Four, three, two, one. So let's just look at that. Three, two, one. Two, three, one. Four on C. Four, three, two, one. After that, after that, uh, one on F. You're gonna place these back down. Two, three, four, 
and then one's going to go to D. So let's try that again from the F. Again, this, this whole section is starting on measure 81. So we're going to start with this F sharp. Three, two, one, two, three, and then one here. Four is going to go to C. Four, three, two, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so after that one, three, two, one, once again. So that one is going to land on D, and then three, two, one. After that, you can take your fourth finger and now put it on D. And we're going to go straight up. Four, three, two, one, two, three, one. So again, that is four, three, two, one, two, three, one, two, and then one, two, three. And again, one, two, three. You're going to cross over there to the A with your one. One, two, one, two, three. And then two comes back. And then one, three, two, one. So let's actually take what we have so far from this whole section. Starting with that F on measure 81. Three, two, one, two, three, one, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, one, three, two, one, and then we'll put four here. Four, three, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, one goes down. One, two, one, two, three, two, one. Cross under three, two, one. Good, and next, three, one, two, one. Put one down here now to the B. Two, one, two, three, two, one, two, one, two, three, one. And then you're into this next three, two, one, two, three. And that pretty much takes you through the next section, this fingering. Three, two, one, two, three. Three, two, one, two, three. And you can use that same pattern throughout pretty much that whole section. So do notice as well, after you've played that first very fast um, section, You have those um, rolled triads in the left hand. And once we get to the next section in measure 81, the pattern changes again. So you're still doing a triad, but it's a separated root and then third and fifth. And then again, when we are at the next section, it changes back to just the straight uh, root, third, fifth root, and it starts on the lower. And I do want you to notice on measure 91 though, we're doing this pattern. you get to the B because uh, the B chord because of what the right hand is doing we've reverted back to just for the B chord in that section and then you can go back to the wide chords so that sounds like this here's our funny B chord That's why we switch back. So otherwise we would run into each other here. In the next section again on measure 97, we're, all, we're gonna keep doing that wide chord and it is again lower for the first D. And I 
want you to notice once we get down to the, that second D and then the G, the A chord is different and this is measure 105. It's just simply A, B, C. And the reason for that straight down here so again we don't want to run into each other on our small harp because we don't have maybe that low A. So we're just going to do A B C. And then the very next measure um, after 104, 105, I actually have you playing the melody note in the left hand. So it sounds like this. notice you have a bit of a close close proximity for your hands there. This is measure 104 and 105. And then you're off. A few more spots I want you to notice and this is on the last page. This is where we have the lever change. So Again, if you're playing this in C and you don't have any levers and you have the C version, you can just leave, ignore this part. Um, even if you maybe you're tuned in D and you don't like lever changes and you don't want to do the lever changes, that's fine. You can leave this out too. But if you want to, here is a good spot to do it. So looking at measure 109, we're on a G chord. Now normally we would play this uh, with all of our left... Uh, this whole chord with your left hand. But I have you playing the D, the top D, with your right hand so that you can come here and sneak that C lever down. So it'll be like this. And there's a good spot to change it for you. And then you just continue. Again, here in measure 12, 112, 9, 10, 11, 12, yes, 112, you have a different sort of A chord, so we don't run into each other. This is again just a, it's an A with a 2 in it, so it's an A with a B. A, B, C, E. I'm going to do that lever change again on measure 109 and 110. back to normal. Keep the lever down here. No need to change it yet. Again, we have the same A. A, B, back to this pattern. All right. Here's something different. This is measure 124. Instead of doing, because it doesn't go with what we're doing in the right hand, we're going to do So again, that's just F, G, A, F, and then G, A, B, G. And then you're back to this pattern for the D. Next you have a G triad so that you have time to come just a triad, not anything going back and forth. That's so you have time to come and flip the lever back up. That's the only spot you'll need it to be back up, is at the very end. 
And then we have a little bit of a different, an A inversion, which you can roll, and then a D, which is rolled. The right hand is also a little different here. After we have, keep the lever down, we're going to start doing some sixths. So you have three sixths in a row there. Start with a third on B and D, and then go straight to a B and then a G, and then down one, and then the F and the D. Now we're going to do a seventh. So this sounds a little crunchy, but it'll resolve. This is where we're going to uh, flip the lever back up, right here. And again, you can do another one of those trills, and I like to do more here. Just between the D and the C. And then an E. And we end on a big D chord. So I'm going to play this from measure 120. I think we've hit all the weirdest things you should look out for. I hope you enjoy. Let me know what you thought.